Here in this video, we're going to take a closer look at trying to figure out what the dipole moment is of a molecule. And we're going to start with a really easy one. We're going to start with hydrochloric acid, HCl, because it's a linear molecule. And linear molecules, it's easier to find the dipole moment of a linear molecule. So take a look at the HCl. We have a hydrogen atom, which has a single valence electron. We have a chlorine atom, which has seven valence electrons. No, now, chlorine is more electronegative than hydrogen, so when they come together, hydrogen, chlorine will pull stronger on this electron and will rip it away from hydrogen. This becomes positively charged, it becomes negatively charged, they join together, and they form an ionic bond. Now, it's not a purely ionic bond because there's also some sharing taking place. Hydrogen would like to have these two electrons part of the time in its valence band, in valence shell, I should say, and chlorine would like to have the eight electrons there. So there's some sharing taking place, but since chlorine is more electronegative, it will pull on the electrons uh, more tightly and it will have the presence of the electrons a greater percentage of the time. So what, what that means is that a linear molecule like uh, HCl, hydrochloric acid, it will be more electronegative on one side and more electropositive on the other side. There will be somewhat of a disparity in the charge distribution, making one end of the molecule a little bit more positive, the other end of the molecule a little bit more negative. So we end up with what we call a polar molecule. Now this polar molecule will have, of course, a separation distance between the atoms. This is the bond length for, uh, for um, hydrochloric acid. And I believe for hydrochloric acid, the bond length is about 128 picometers. And because of that, a separation of charges, and because the distance between them, we know that it's going to have a dipole moment. Remember, the, the equation of a dipole moment is equal to the charge that's separated, the, the length between or the distance between the two, the two charges, and then what we have to take into account with a molecule is that it's not 100% ionic. It's not like it's, there's a separation of one complete electron. One electron didn't go to the chlorine atom and stay there 100% of the time. There's some sharing taking place. And so it's not 100% ionic. It's only partially ionic, and we need to figure out what that partial percentage is. What percent of the time, so to speak, does chlorine get the electron? What percent of the time does the hydrogen get the electron? It's kind of the way you want to look at it. So we need to figure out what that is as well. So we do know that one electron went from hydrogen to chlorine. If that was a 100% arrangement, chlorine would now have one negative charge and hydrogen would now have one positive charge. So Q would be one electron charge. And of course, one electron charge is equal to 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs converted to the standard unit of charge. The length, bond length, 128 picometers, that means 128 times 10 to the minus 12 meters. So normally, the dipole moment would be Q times L, it'd simply be the product of those two numbers. But since it's not a 100% arrangement, we need to find out the percent ionic that that molecule is. Um, and the way to do that, there's different ways, but there's a general form that we can use. We can say that the, the percent ionic bond is equal to 1 minus E raised to the minus 0 0.25 times the difference in the electronegativity. Now, sometimes I write EN, so maybe I'll just write it as E. E stands for electronegativity, quantity squared. All right, now that's not the exact formula. It's a relative, it's a relative equation that gives us something that's fairly close to the true number that we're looking for. There's no absolutes in this particular case. And that will get us pretty close. Remember, electronegativity is also not an absolute number. When we come up with the numbers, those are calculated values that are not precise. So we're not dealing with a precise science here, but we're getting something that will be pretty close. Now, what is the difference in electronegativity between hydrogen and chlorine? Now, hydrogen has an electronegativity of about 2.2. Now, some charts will say 2.1, some charts will say 2.2. It depends what system you use. Chlorine has an electronegativity of 3.0. So the difference between them is 0.8. So from here, we can say that the delta E is equal to 0.8. So let's find out how, how ionic this bond is. So this is equal to 1 minus E raised to the minus 0 0.25 times the quantity 0 0.8 squared. All right, for that we need a calculator. So if we go 0 0.8 squared, 0 0.8, and we square that, and then we multiply that times 0 0.25 and multiply times the negative, 
and now we use that number as an exponent. Let me write it down in case you try to do this. So this should now be equal to 1 minus e to the minus 0 0.16 power. So get your e button on your calculator, raise it to the minus, 1 .6, minus uh, 0 0.16 power. So that should give you 1 minus 0 0.85. So that's equal to 0 0.15 or well, sometimes, yeah, that's close enough, or 15%. So this tells us that HCl is about 15% ionic and about 85% then covalent. That's kind of the way you want to look at it. Now, the real number is actually closer to 0.17 or 17%, but for our purpose, that's close enough. So it gives us a pretty good feel for it. All right, so now we plug in the numbers into our equation. So now we know that the dipole moment is equal to the charge, which is 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19. And that would be coulombs. The distance in meters would be uh, 128 times 10 to the minus 12 meters. And then we have to take into account that it's only about 15% ionic. And so when we multiply all that out, we get 1.6 e to the 19 minus times 128 e to the 12 minus times 0.15 equals. And so we get the dipole moment of 3.07 times 10 to the minus 30 coulombs times meter. Now remember, that if we divide that by 3.34, because sometimes we like to use the units Debye, and so if we then convert that to Debye's, so we have 1 Debye, oop, that's the capital D, 1D divided by 3.34 times 10 to the minus 30 coulombs times meters. So divide this by 3.34 e to the 30 minus equals, and so we have about 0.92 Dubai. So D stands for uh, Debye's, which is a standard unit. Uh, there we go. Standard unit for, um, there we go, for the dipole moment of the molecule. All right, and that's how you do that. If you have a linear molecule, simply all you need to do to find the dipole moment is know the bond length, know the charge has been exchanged, typically one electron. Then you find the difference in the electronegativity to find out what percent ionic this bond is. You multiply the three numbers together, the charge, the, the uh, distance of the bond length, and the percent ionic, and you come up with a number that's pretty close to the dipole moment of that molecule. And again, remember, not an exact science. You will not get exact numbers. There are some complications to it to get, that makes it pretty difficult, at least at this level, to get really exact numbers. But that's a result that's pretty close to the real number. All right, that's how you do that.